Samantha here, the Huga Stitcher. Welcome to my home here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and welcome to my first episode of 2024. I'm really excited to be back. I have a really fun episode planned for you today. I hope you are ready. I hope you're stitching. I hope you have a hot coffee or a hot beverage. You've got your feet up and you're ready to stitch and ready to have some fun. So I wanted to start off with my 2024 book of days. I got a new copy for Christmas. Really, really excited because I have been collecting for a few years now. This is my 2022 book of days when I first started my floss tube and I have completed my 2023 book and I'm just really excited to carry on with this tradition. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I, you know, now that I'm looking back, January, 2022, you know, not that many whoops. I think we had like 12 whoops there. And um, it's just really fun to see how far I have come since then and how many projects I've finished since then. It's just a really great way to keep track of your stitching. And now I'm gonna keep these, they're gonna be on the shelf. And um, from years on, I'm gonna be collecting them every year and stickering every year and having fun. So I made a new list of all of my works in progress, um, going from oldest to newest. And I had to go over into February. Um, and continue my list. So carried over on the next page and I made a spot for new whips. Um, so any new projects that I add on to this list in 2024. Really excited. Um, I have been sharing with you all over the past um, maybe four or five months, I've been sharing a little bits of what my goals are for 2024 and where, where I'm trying to get to. I have mentioned before that I've been trying to get up to 30 whips and I had a viewer on my last video ask, like, why 30? What's so special about 30 whips? And it all started last May during Mania. Mania. And I follow and watch Brenda, the handwork maniac. She's amazing. She's inspiring. And I just love how um, her video last May of how she does Mania. And I'm like, I want to do something like that. You know, she does basically, she has 24 whips because it's 2024 now. Um, she has 24 projects that she puts on a board and she rotates through them. So what that means is during the month of Mania, she works on a project. And if that project is done the next year, she takes it off the list and puts a new one on. That's sort of the gist of it. And that sort of got my, you know, my thoughts going. And it started me thinking about, you know, what I wanted to do for Mania next year. And I had originally come up with, well, I want to have 24 works in progress. And I started off with that and I was building, you know, adding more works in progress. And then I came up with the idea of doing 30 um, because uh, there's 31 days in May. But I, I like the idea of the nice even 30 because I have a plan. I have a plan to get my works in progress during 2024 up to 30 whips and 10 of those projects will be in the finishing stages of the project close to the end. Maybe it's beading on a project that's fully stitched but doesn't have the back stitching or beading done. Or, you know, it's a medium-sized project and it's really close to the end. It's, it's, a, it's close to a finish. And I'm currently at six of those. I currently have six so far, but I wanna get up to 10. And I wanna get up to 10 middle projects, projects that are halfway done and considered, you know, a middle middle of, of the project. And then I also wanna have 10 projects that are in the starting phase. And the reason why I've come up with this idea, it all happened last year. Last year, um, at the end of the year, I was like gung-ho to finish all of my projects that were close to a finish, and I did that. And then when the next year rolled around, I was like, wow, I don't have anything that's at that stage anymore. <laughs> They're all kind of all over. And, you know, I wanted to have that feeling throughout the year, like this was a new start. That's exciting. This one's in the middle and it's halfway done and you can see really great progress. Awesome. And then you've got projects that are near the end and it's exciting. And you know, like I know, if I were to just sit and just stitch on one project, I could fly through it and finish it up. And so there's those different stages of projects and I, I wanted to have 10, 10, 10, so that you could have that experience throughout the year. So my goal this year is to get up to 30 whips, 10 in the start, 10 in the middle, and 10 near the end. And I have some work to do, <laughs> I really do. 
So I, I want to share with you my 27 projects and I wanna start off with all the projects that are near the end of the project. We're gonna go finishes, middles, and then new starts. So here we go. First up, I wanted to share with you my Emerald City by Owl Forest Embroidery. This was a really fun stitch. I have been stitching on this for a couple years and um, this was a free download from Owl Forest Embroidery. They still have it there if you're interested in stitching this design with me. Um, you can convert to DMC and stitch on whatever you want. And if you want, you can add in new, new um, elements to the design like I have. I have added in wherever I thought I could some sparkle. You know, these corn here in the fields, they had some spaces in the stitching. And I thought, wow, I wonder if I could add some, you know, sort of corn colored beads to the design. And I think it looks really, really great. Same with any elements of magic. I've added in um, some Magnifica beads. These were all beads from past, past stitches, you know, leftover beads that had, you know, 30 beads left in the container. And I thought, well, what the heck? I'm gonna um, add them to this design if it seems like they'll match the, the design. And I have added little red slippers here using a red DMC sparkly floss. I've added some silver sparkly floss for the Tin Man. I also used Whisper for the mane of the lion and in his tail too. Um, for these poppies, I had a lot of fun doing this part. So basically in the center, I had added a black bead. And for the, la the large flowers in the back, I used a large black bead. And then for the little flowers at the bottom, I used a black petite bead. So that was a lot of fun, it kind of adds dimension. And then these mice over here, so cute. I did little tiny petite black beads for the eyes and then a large bead for the nose. How adorable is that? So cute. And then I used a black diamond um, floss for the whiskers, which are perfect, perfect for whiskers. They have that right texture and everything. And then I added a gold beads for the crown. And then for Emerald City, I wanted it to be extra sparkly. I added in gold, um, you know, green beads and emerald colored treasures. Also used the green DMC fancy sparkly floss that was called for in the design. Um, but where I could, I added Krynik. I just wanted it to be super sparkly. And this was fun. So right in the center of the design was a little bell and it was stitched. And I found this little Mill Hill bell treasure and it was the absolute perfect size that fit right over where the stitching would go. And I thought, well, that is meant to be. That's meant to be and I really love it. It adds, um, you know, just that extra little detail. And then um, for this witch, I, I think I might add a little eye to that one. I'm not sure, maybe a, a little petite black bead. But I did use like, for the very first time in her dress, it's hard to, it doesn't, I'm not sure if it shows up, but I used um, the 310 Etoile. And it's like really, really soft sparkle to it. But in person, you definitely do see the effect. So that's fun. And these cute, adorable needle minders were gifted to me um, by Amber, Rogue Mama Stitcher. Back when I had first started this project, um, she saw these and thought I, I needed to have them <laughs> for this stitch. And I absolutely love them. And I, I am going to try to find a really cool way of displaying them when I'm done this stitch um, because I'll have Emerald City hopefully one day like framed and it would be really cool to have these displayed close by them. I absolutely love them. They're so adorable. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> these are so cute. Uh, I'm going to cherish them. But yes, this is really close to a finish. This is close to, I think there's three more parts left and I will work on it this year. Even though this is close to a finish, I still have work to do. I could do a couple more parts and leave one more, the last part um, for when I'm fully finished and like my 10, 10, 10. So yeah, that's the first one. Owl Forest Embroidery, Emerald City. And then next up, I have a design here by Mirabilia 
called Stargazer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I might have to stitch this twice, everyone. Because I have two daughters that both love this design. Obviously, I'm not going to stitch them back to back, but I'm going to hang on to this pattern when I'm done with it because I may decide down the road that I need to stitch it a second time. I absolutely love this stitch. Um, it is on the called for 32 count amber toasted um, linen by Witchelt. And that's something a viewer had mentioned to me because I had mentioned before that I might have to stitch this twice. She had said, you know, when you, if you do decide to do that, that maybe you'd pick a different fabric. That's not a bad idea. I kind of like that idea because then it would be a little bit of a different experience. But here I am. I consider this close to, you know, past the middle, closer to the finishing um, side of things. I have some more work to do on her dress. Um, just that bottom, bottom part of her dress there. And then all the beading. She's so amazing. I love this stitch so much. I feel like this is a classic Mirabilia Nor Corbett design that, I mean, when did this come out? It was a long time ago. It's the, it's number 88 and it originally came out in 2006. So it's been around for a while and it's a popular one. Um, you know, it's not out of print. So if this, if you're looking at this right now, like I absolutely love this stitch. Get your hands on the pattern, put it in your collection so that one day you can stitch it too. Um, you know, there are a lot of charts recently, well, it's always, every year there's uh, Mirabilia's that go out of print. Um, and then that's when the frenzy happens, right? People are like, dang, I wish I had, it's always been available. You know, I, I was on my list of projects that I wanted to stitch one day. And I suggest if you go on the website and you see anything that is currently available, that's a one day, I must stitch that pattern, go get it. <laughs> Just add it to your collection if you can. Um, I, I started to do that uh, last year and I, I think I have them all that I'm really passionate about. Anything on top of that would just be an absolute treat on top, right? Like <laughs> there'll be others and there's always new releases um, that will become new favorites. But yep, this is Stargazer, popular one. Really excited to get back to that and to stitch some more on her dress soon. Okay, back to Owl Forest Embroidery. This is Patchwork Calendar. Last month, for the month of November, um, well, I guess, yeah, it was in December, but in November, I finished the November block. I'm not sure if I showed it in my last video, if I had quite, maybe I wasn't quite done yet. But, um, yep, yeah, I finished the November block, which means I have one more left to go. So here is the December one. And you know what's funny? This, I think, has been my most favorite color out of all of them that I've done so far. The floss on here is like this deep purple and then a sort of a fuchsia-y, you know, plum sort of purple with it as well. So, so pretty. And this design is really simple to do too. I'll show you a little bit of a closer picture of it. So you can see it here. Even the picture doesn't do it justice. <laughs> the colors look a little bit different. These almost look like red and plum and black almost, um, but really fun design. These have been so, so fun to do. I'm a little sad that I'm like, this is the last one and that it's over because I've enjoyed having a project that was sort of a monthly thing, small, you know, you could do it in one month um, and then maybe even stitch it while you're in that month. I really love that idea. So this one is almost finished and I have one more project, um, which is a zodiac sign stitch. That's sort of monthly, right? And um, I'm gonna continue on with that one. And when it's done, I need to consider something else that's a monthly stitch. So I'll be looking out for something like that for 2025. <laughs> Plotting ahead here. But yeah, isn't this amazing? This has been really fun. So all of these I have current, um, my plan is to make them into project bags. I've only made one of them into a project portfolio and I'll show it to you later on uh, throughout the video. But these are some of the ones that I have finished. There's 12 in total. But yeah, I wanna make them into a project bag, another portfolio, whatever I'm feeling. And it's kind of fun to have these, you know, one day I might be out shopping and see a fabric that's absolutely perfect for one of these, like these spring bunnies. 
beautiful purple and green colors. You know, there's one in here that's, um, this one's a sheep. Cute spring colors. There's one that's a snail. I wanna show, this one's adorable. Oh yeah, peacock. Um, that I, I know that if, yeah, this one. Look at those beautiful colors. Ah, love that one. You know, if I find the perfect fabric for it, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be great for my, you know, my snail bag or something. <laughs> this one's butterflies. I'm a butterfly fan. And this one's bumblebees. How fun are those? I think it tells you in here, each one had about 2,000 stitches, which is like the perfect amount for a, you know, a monthly stitch. Totally doable. <laughs> really, really fun. All force embroidery. And I feel like anybody could stitch these with any colors. Like you could use, um, I don't know, a silk, a variegated silk, water lilies, or a rainbow gallery, or, um, you know, there's lots of companies that have variegated flosses. You could pick one of your favorite colors and stitch something like this. And just away you go. Maybe it's a fall one. Some fall colors or spring colors, that sort of thing. <laughs> there we go. Patchwork Calendar by Owl Forest Embroidery. And then this one is a little project that is in the finishing stages, getting close to the end. This is um, a Mill Hill kit. And this one's called Azul. Cute. I started this in the fall and thought it would just be, I've had it in my collection forever. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna stitch it. I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna start it. Um, Cause I've recently fallen in love with these. So fun. And I'm not sure like, okay, when I'm finished, I'll make it into like an ornament. And would I hang it on the Christmas tree? I don't think so. I don't know. I'll find, I'll find a place for it. Maybe I need a little Halloween tree one day or I could gift it in like a gift exchange or something. But it's really adorable. I just need to add in a few more stitches and then it's time to bead. <laughs> Super fun. Okay and I have two more here. This one is Nora Corbett Bluebell. I love her. She's so pretty. I have plans um, to stitch. I have one more. I've been stitching the Pixie Couture collection. I have six of them in total. This is my fifth one. And I have one more to come, which is Poppy. And I'm gonna start her this year. I just recently purchased some fabric so that I can, um, can stitch her soon. I have all the floss and the pattern and everything to go along with Bluebell. She's getting close to a finish. I just have to do the back stitching on her skin back stitching in her wings. Um, there's a few more stitches that come down here. It's almost like she's holding um, the stem of the flowers. So I gotta do that. And then the back stitching at her feet and all the beads, uh, which is the really, really fun part. <laughs> and that was another reason, you know, some of these Nora Corbett's, they have uh, beading and it's my favorite part. And when I get to the end and I bead them all, it's like, oh, you know, you're starting over at the very beginning and you got to stitch the whole project and not get to that beading stage. I wanted to have multiple projects that were at the beading stage of the project so that I can enjoy them throughout the year. Isn't she beautiful? Ah, love her. Love her. Close to finish. And then last up, um, this is Luna by Nora Corbett. So I have been here. I was, Actually, you can pretty much see the whole design, but I'll show you the um, pattern first. I have been stitching the Pixie, um, the Bewitching Pixie collection. This is my third, um, third one, I think, and I have three more that I want to do. Um, yeah. So again, all the stitching is done on this one. All that's left is, no, it looks like I've done the back stitching. This one just needs beads and treasures. Look at this sparkly crinic down at the bottom. This I believe is color 015, high luster. Yeah, that's a good color. <laughs> it's so fun, look at that. Oh, yeah, some back stitching completed. Just need to do the beads all through her dress. There's um, a little more detail to the wing, you know, the little, 
a um, few more stitches and is that a fun treasure at the end? Yeah, look at that. So a few more stitches there. Yay. I have already purchased fabric for this is all done on the milk chocolate linen by Witchelt, 32 count. And I purchased another piece so that I can start the next one, hopefully this fall. There we go. All right, now we will move on to all of my middle projects. I have nine of them and they're all the projects that I consider the middle. Some of them are a little bit like maybe not quite in the middle because they're big projects, but I'm like, I've been working on them for a long time and we're just gonna keep going. I'm gonna consider it a middle, middle project because there's a lot of stitches in there. So here we go. First up, we're gonna do Treasure Island by Owl Forest Embroidery. This is a stitch along that started last year. It is now completed. They did the last release um, mid-December. And I am really, really thrilled with my progress so far. I, I would say halfway through the design, the where I have stopped on this pattern, I ha now that the whole thing has been released, I have options now of where I wanna go. I could do more of the border and complete the stitch all the way around. Um, there's a few more people. At the bottom, there's the treasure chest and the parrot. Or I could work in the middle of the design, which is the island itself. Um, X marks the spot for the treasure, which is really fun too. So I have some options of where I could go with this. I, I do think I'm going to work on this uh, right away. I want to do a couple more, you know, maybe a couple more people, that sort of thing. Um, but I, I do want to save this stitch and work more on it this coming summer. I think this would be a really fun summer stitch, work on for July and August kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Doesn't this look great? I'm so happy with this one. And what is Owl Forest Embroidery going to come out for, with a stitch along for 2024? I'm excited. <laughs> you know, this spring to sort of find out what it's going to be. They always come out with really free, um, fun, free designs that you can download. And you can um, kit them up with colors from, you know, DMC. Or you could, uh, you know, get a little adventurous and, you know, do some over dyes, that sort of thing. Whatever you're feeling, right? So you could have some fun with it as well. Anyway, so we're going to move on. This is a, a small stitch. This is something I started a couple years ago um, when the Common Threaded Stitcher was going. So this was a release in August, not last year, but the year before, I believe. Um, it's an exclusive design by Hello from Liz Matthew, Common Threaded Stitcher, free design. And so my plan is every time that they have the Common Threaded Stitcher going on Instagram, I'm gonna work on this stitch, um, whenever it is. I, I believe it's twice a year, so maybe it's coming up soon. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun. This is, it doesn't look like a lot of stitching so far, but I'm, I'm considering it a middle start uh, or a middle stitch. I've done the center piece. I've got to do the needle and thread, and then it's onto the border. Little fun little stitch. So I'm not quite halfway through, but I'm considering it a middle <laughs> and it'll get more stitching done this year. We'll bring it into a middle uh, right away. So that's exciting. Only a few colors on that one. Um, next up, I'm going to do some Velcro. Sorry about that. This is a portfolio that I was talking about where I had used the patchwork calendar um, stitch from Owl Forest Embroidery and put it on um, this portfolio that I worked on with my girlfriend, Erica. You can find her on Fibers and Floss Canada on YouTube and Fibers and Floss on Instagram. That's my bestie, she's my girlfriend, and this summer she came down to visit and we made this together. It was really, really fun. Inside I have two projects that kind of go together. I have, I'll show you this one, it's Spring Quaker, which is a stitch along I started in November, 2022. And the reason why I fell in love with this design is, um, you know, the spring element to it. But at the quote in the center says, no matter how long the winter, spring is sure to follow. And that really hit home for me. Um, living in Canada, living in the center of Canada, it gets very, very cold. Our winters are long. And I always struggle, you know, 
when November hits and the first snowfall comes, the big snowfall, and it covers the ground and you're just like, that's it. I'm not going to see the grass, the ground until, you know, April, May, <laughs> well, usually March and April is when things start to melt, but it's, it takes a long time. May is beautiful, um, but it takes a long time. And so I was like, I'm going to start this stitch. Um, we did the spring is sure to follow Sal and I'm halfway through the design and I'm feeling like this needs to come out right away in the new year um, as we are in the thick of winter and this will help. Um, I'm, I'm kind of at this spot now where um, it's, I, I've got to make the jump into the center of the design. I've done the full all the way around of the Quaker and now it's time to move into the center and for some reason I'm stuck on this. I just need to do it. I just need to sit down and do the counting and make those first couple stitches and then away I go. But for whatever reason it's like holding me down <laughs> that I have to make that jump. I'm scared of making a mistake um, because the bottom and the top are, you know, are done and the sides are done. I think that's what it is. Just a little bit of fear, but I'll get over it. <laughs> I gotta make the jump and go into the center, which is beautiful, by the way. Like, I'm excited to stitch the basket, the flowers, and then look at the little town, the little houses and the trees. And actually, I enjoy doing this where it's like the checker and you do like, you know, it's the exact same all the way across. It's gonna be so fun. Um, and then, around this border here is white satin stitch which i'm gonna do there's two ways you can do it you can do cross stitch um, if you want or you can do the satin stitch and i'm gonna do the satin stitch because i know how to do that now and um i think it'll look really really beautiful so yeah just gotta get back to it what do you think this is so pretty this is so so pretty i'm stitching this on a 36 count hand dyed by Rolanda, who is Canadian, and stitching it with DMC two over two. I had to think about it for a second, but very plush stitching. You know, a lot of people talk about when they're using 36, typically it's one strand. I went with two. I really wanted it to be bold and stand out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So pretty, so perfect. I love it. I love it. Um, I will share with you soon my summer Quaker. But that one I'll show to you a little bit later because it's more on the starting stage. Okay, so I'll put that back. Move on to the next one. Um, this is a Nora Corbett design that I just started um, in November, I think, 2023. Holy, a lot of you fell in love with this design when I started stitching it. They're like, oh, I think it's my new favorite. <laughs> She's so cute. She's the perfect um, pixie, especially for the holiday, right? Like for the for Christmas. Um, but she's not a, a lot of stitching. Like easy. I found this really easy, really, really easy to do. So I would say I'm in the middle. I've completed the majority of her dress, stitched the skin on the top and a little bit of her hair. I still got to put in legs and more of the berries. And then those beautiful fun wings. Ah, she's so cute. look at the color right like this is what people always talk about I mentioned it before you know you see the picture you're like okay yeah that's pretty and then you see it in person and you're like oh yeah the colors are beautiful <laughs> I absolutely love that one she's gorgeous she doesn't even have any sparkle in her yet and her wings will do that they'll have the element of sparkle and probably beads in her hair that's a you know Nora does that all the time yep there's beads in her hair beautiful I'm excited to get back to this one. I think I might save it um, maybe for Christmas in July and then again in you know December next year, uh, this year, December 2024. Um, and then on that topic of Christmas stitching, this is Dancer from the Christmas Eve Courier Collection. And this is where I am on this one. So most of the stitching um, in the center is complete. I feel like there's a little bit more ribbon. Um, there's a lot of um, spaces in this greenery right here above the bow. I think that's all treasures. 
yeah and there's some back stitching that needs to be done and then the border and so I like to finish this will be a finish in um, July for Christmas in July because I like to complete one reindeer year um, I started it in December I'm going to finish it in July and then I'll start another reindeer in December again so this will be a soon to be finish but in the middle stages right now and then that brings me on to um, the giveaway from my last video. I had promised I would do a giveaway for Blitzen, one of the Christmas Eve couriers. I had a, um, an extra one in my collection and I did a draw um, using the word Blitzen, um, using the common comment picker. And the winner is Linda Stitching by the Pond 4954. So Linda, please reach out to me by email using um, the email address below and I will ask for your address and I will ship this out to you. Congratulations, Linda. Yeah, <laughs> this is such a fun stitch. And I feel like if you can get one of these done, you're gonna wanna stitch them all. Just saying, you're gonna wanna do it. <laughs> You'll wanna stitch the sleigh and do all the things. All right, so up next, we're gonna do Tiny Modernist. This is my Zodiac sign. It was a stitch along a few years ago. And this is my one project that is kind of that monthly um, stitch that, you know, sometimes it's fun to have something that's like, oh, it's the month of cancer. So I'm gonna stitch this one, you know, let's do the cute little crab. Or um, maybe I might just work more on the border. Um, there's also these really fun um, sun and moon designs at the top and the bottom. So those could be fun to do. Just like, oh, I feel like doing that. And um, I'm dying to do Leo the lion because I'm a Leo. So maybe this August I might do that. But this is my ongoing um, project for like a yearly project. And here I am. I'm stitching this on a 40 count Gothic by Picture This Plus. Kind of looking like the universe really fun and there we go I've done Aquarius Pisces Aries and Taurus and this last year um, you know I asked you viewers you know what I should do because I you know I debated a long time about the border and should I just go ahead and complete the whole border and then I could jump around and then a lot of viewers piped in and said, hey, Samantha, why don't you just stitch the circles? You don't have to do the complete border. You can do those, the, the rest of the border later, but stitch the circles so that you can jump around. And that's what I did. I thought that was amazing. Why didn't I just think of that? <laughs> I should have just done that. And now I'm ready to jump anywhere I want um, on the rest of the design and away I go. So I'm stitching this all um, using the called for DMC colors using one strand over two because it's 40 count. So these are teeny tiny petite stitches. And I can't help but think about this stitch. I don't know if you guys do this or not. Sometimes we pick a pattern and we know who we're stitching it for. You know, maybe it's a mother or a sister or a friend or a coworker or someone, you're thinking of that person when you're stitching the design. And for this one, I'm stitching it for me, but I can't help but think maybe one day there's somebody in my family in the future who is going to fall in love with the, you know, there's a lot of people who are passionate about Zodiac and sun and moon and things like that. And I can't help but think and wonder, is there gonna be somebody in my family one day that just absolutely loves this stitch and it becomes theirs? You know, maybe I have gifted it to them or have passed on and, you know, wanted it to be in the family kind of thing. And I, I'm, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm stitching on this design for some reason. Um, yeah, let me know if you ever do this too. You know, you're thinking of a certain person and while you're stitching, that's really fun. But that's what I think about sometimes about this stitch <laughs> is the zodiac sign because I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool, but I'm the only one in my family so far that's like, yeah, okay, it's, it's okay. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's so clever with the universe sort of coloring fabric and then the really fun zodiac signs. I think it's adorable and I really do love the sun and moon in this design. They've got cute little faces in them. 
I've seen some people do um, some of them with the face and some of them without the face. And I'm going to visit that idea when I get to it. But I, I, I think I like it. It's cute. Next is a stitch that is my oldest work in progress. Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Love this one. This is the stitch I was sort of mentioning to you that I'm not halfway through the design, but I've had, it's my oldest work in progress, the oldest one I have. And I am working currently, I've worked across it in one, two, and three. I'm on the fourth block. You know, typically I would want to say like around here would be the middle, you know, of the design, but um, I'm considering this a middle. It's going to be there for a while. <laughs> and here we go. This is stitched on all the called for DMC. It's the called for fabric, which is 40 count legacy by picture this plus. And I absolutely love the coloring of it. It looks awesome. And I'm proud of myself. This is a big project. There is a lot of stitching. I'm proud of how far I've come and I'm going to continue on. I look forward to stitching this every time I bring it out. And even just, you know, showing it to you today, just like, oh yeah, I want to finish that block. <laughs> I want to go to, I want, I really want to get into this next one here um, with the mermaid and the ship. And then of course the witches in the middle and the cauldron and the bubbles and the, all the fun colors and everything. I can't wait to get that into the design, um, but it's looking amazing. This one is challenging for me though. Um, being on 40 count, I stitch in hand and um it's just the you know have you ever bounced around from project to project and sometimes it's 40 count sometimes it's 28 sometimes it's 32 36 and whenever i do that and i come back to this project it does take me time to get back into the groove of the 40 count and i've made a new rule for myself no more <laughs> i can do it it's just, it's a bit slower for me. I like to see the progress come a lot um, quicker. And I like the experience of having, you know, knowing that I can do it. Um, and because this is such a large stitch, yes, the 40 count will make it not so large. So I'm happy I made that decision. Um, but going forward, I'm going to stick with my comfort, which is 32 count. Um, I just find that that's my jam. I mean, sometimes I'll work on a 28 or a 36, but 32 is my absolute comfort stitching. And I'm going to make a goal for myself to try to keep, um, to keep doing that going forward. But like I said, I don't regret it. <laughs> I just, uh, never again. Okay. Never again. <laughs> uh, oh. There we go, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. And then I have a couple more. This one is, I can't wait to stitch on this again. This is Mooka by Mirabilia. This is, I would have to say, the largest Mirabilia I've ever stitched. So what does it say? The stitch count is 260 by 241. And this one has got a, has scenery in it, right? Like it's got the background, the, the chandelier, the border. And most of my, I don't think I have any Mirabilias that have a border to them. I think this is the first one I've ever done that's like that. Um, so there's a lot of stitching in there. Lots and lots of stitching. But she is like one of my favorite designs. It's MD156, and this came out in 2018. And I remember when it came out, I this was a pattern I immediately purchased and had in my collection for a long time, because back then in 2018, I was stitch on one project at a time kind of gal. And maybe I would have two or three um, throughout the year, but I was saving it. And I'm really excited, you know, that I've started it. I would say, you know, it's not fully halfway through the design, but I feel like it's a, it's a good halfway point. Um, she's beautiful. There's still more to do on her dress and more to fill in on her wings. There's some back stitching that needs to be done. And then of course, all the beads. I really enjoyed, and I didn't expect this. I really enjoyed doing the bed post and the bed frame. Um, that part, I had no idea that this was going to happen. You know, the design had, um, had some water lily silk in it 
and um that's what all of this is right here is all silk so that was really fun i can't wait to do the other side of the bed i have to get um some more bedding in though there's that comforter that's on the top and the pillow and then these really fun ribbons and more bedding down here but i want to get a stretch across and do the other side of the bedpost get the border going there's lots to do on this project but i'm looking forward to it so fun Beautiful. Mooka. I don't see many people stitch Mooka either. And I'm not sure what it is about it. Like anybody who loves fairies, I mean, she's got such unique hair too, the buns on the side. And um, maybe it's because it's such a large stitch. I'm not sure, but it's moody too. I actually really love it. <laughs> it's so fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not a project. I've seen more people stitching it lately, but um this isn't, it's not a really popular design. And I think it's amazing. I think it's so amazing. Okay, so next up is my last one um, for this section of my middles. This is a Teresa Wentzler Lily Maiden. This is my first Teresa, mm -hmm. and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I brought it out. It's on my brand new stand. I'm really excited I got it for Christmas. Um, it is the Lori stand, the Lowry stand. And I thought it would be kind of fun to show you in the video. You can kind of see it in the background. Just gonna loosen it up. There we go. So this is on my Q-snap now. This is what I've been stitching on for the last four days, I think, three or four days. And I have been working on, and I didn't know I was gonna do this. I brought it out, I put it on my stand, I started stitching and I'm thinking, where am I gonna go? What should I do? Should I do her wing, which I wanna do? Should I do her face? Should I do some of the pink of her dress? You know, what should I do? And then I just felt like, um, you know, I wanted to do some easy stitching. I wanted to watch movies. It's been holiday break. My kids have been home and I just wanted to sit and stitch, you know, simple stuff. So I decided I'm going to do the rest of the border. So it was just one color at a time, count down. And then once I got that first one in, it was like, oh, easy. Just grab the color and go. So I've done that. There was some back stitching that went along in there too and it's looking great. I have a goal for myself. I would like to get this inner border of the picture in so that you could see the full shape. There's the top. I'd like to do the bottom and then see these lines of stitching that come down. I'd like to do that at the, so it creates that, um, you know, that image of this is the center and then away I go. I want to move away from doing this just stitching the whole because it's the pattern is like one page is this and the other page is that so I I had been stitching like that where you can see the line but I don't want to do that anymore nah -uh. because I did notice is it on this side yeah over here that you could see exactly where I had started my stitches and started down um, because of that page break and it's because all five stitches there are all ended and you know tied off right and then I had to start again and move down and I don't want that to happen um, through the rest of the design so I will continue you know if I'm doing these green colors in here carry them over carry them down anything that's in the middle of this stitching here is like I'll start the color and carry over from page one to the second page sort of thing you know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say <laughs> oh to avoid that from happening um throughout the design I love this stitch like it's a slow burn I always say you know a Teresa Wenser is not something that's going to happen quickly um but the colors on this I mean this picture doesn't do anything it's faded you can't really even see you know but then you see the colors like this and you're like that's Teresa Wensler's gift the dimension the differently these are all blended colors in there you get it you see it right and um, as I've been stitching on this uh, the last couple of days my oldest daughter has said, Mom, um, I'm going to need, when that's done and framed one day, I'm going to need that one for when I move out, is what she said. <laughs> I'm 
wanted to be, um, you know, close to my bookshelf with all my books. And I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. Okay, that's definitely, it's absolutely, it's gonna be yours, that's it. <laughs> See it once and it's yours. Uh, it just brings me joy to know that she would, you know, want to see my stitching and to hang it on her wall. That's really special. So absolutely, I'm going to stitch it for her. Beautiful. So this sort of, now that we're talking about Teresa Wensler, I wanted to talk to you about my girlfriend and I, Erica, Fibers and Floss, Canada, on YouTube. We have been talking about Teresa Wensler. We wanted to stitch on our patterns uh, for the month of January, which I'm going to do. And um, Erica has started um, the Peacock uh, Tapestry by Teresa Wensler. And she has done a video where she's showing how she kits it up. And because it's, it's a lot of floss, it's a lot of blending. You know, you do one strand of this and one strand of that and put them together. And you know, how do you organize your floss and how do you organize a Teresa Wensler? And she just recently kitted one up. So I'm gonna put a link to the video so that you can go check it out. And if you're interested in seeing that, I know I'm gonna, I haven't seen it yet, but she's filmed today. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that as well because I have a new pattern here that um, I had received from a viewer a while back. It's the Teresa Wensler, the storyteller. The dragon. And I've been talking about it all year that I really wanted to start this. And because of my girlfriend and I, Erica, um, doing, you know, Teresa Wensler for the month of January, I was like, it would be kind of fun to start a new one. Should I do it? I don't know. I, I thought about it for a little while and I told myself, no, I'm going to stick with my Lily Maiden, keep going and be happy with that. But then a viewer on my last video, Michelle, the Chinook Crafter, she has a floss tube as well. She mentioned on my last video, she said, you know, I'm really excited. I'm going to be stitching the storyteller and you stitch it yours too kind of thing. And after all, it is the year of the dragon 2024. And that just threw me through like, absolutely. This is a reason to stitch a dragon this year, 2024. And, um, I'm excited to stitch this. I have purchased fabric hasn't arrived yet, but it's coming and I've started to collect the floss and I haven't decided on how I'm going to organize it yet because there's a lot of floss in here. I think there's like a hundred skeins of floss or something, something crazy. And I'm going to figure out how I'm going to, you know, how I am going to organize it. And I will share with that with you later, but back to the year of the dragon, I thought it would be really fun to do a stitch along around this theme. Um, so Chinese New Year actually falls on, I wrote it down, the second new moon after the winter solstice. So this year in 2024, it happens on February 10th, which is a Saturday. And that's when I'm gonna start this new design. And if any of you are interested, it doesn't need to be this dragon. It could be any dragon. Uh, it could be a small dragon. It could be something in your collection already. Maybe it's a st uh, stitch that you have started that has a dragon in it. Join us, we're gonna use the hashtag Year of the Dragon Cell. And it'll run all year, and you can jump in and jump out whenever you want. You can start something with us, you can stitch throughout the year. Um, for me, this is gonna be a start, and I'm gonna stitch on it throughout the year and then carry over. Obviously, this is gonna take me more than a year to stitch. <laughs> it's a big one and a lot of detail. Um, but yeah, I thought this is a perfect excuse to start this stitch. So thank you, Michelle, for, you know, planting the seed and for, you know, for doing this one as well. Um, I have been following her on Instagram and she's got a brand new setup where she's got a new stand, she's got fabric and she's started the Teresa Wensler Storyteller. So I'm excited to follow her progress, but also for me to, to join her as well. So that's really exciting. Um, yeah, so I hope that you will join the Year of the Dragon Sal. If you have something in your collection that is has a dragon in it, why not? That sounds fun. Erica is also joining as well, and so I'm excited to stitch that with her too. All right, I also grabbed a couple of my other dragon stitches that I thought you might be, like to see, just for fun. Um, this is in my collection. This one's called Dragon Lake by Karen Weaver, Black Swan Designs. 
maybe I might take the excuse to find fabric this year and to start this one. Just because it is the year of the dragon, that would be kind of cool to have a couple. But I don't have fabric for that one yet, or this one either. This is The Wizard of Fire by Karen Weaver. And this one's epic. Maggie um, Kitchy Whips, she has this as a whip. And I have been dying to start this one because I want to stitch a stitch with her. Um, and it's epic, like this is so fun, so, so fun. So this dragon, there's fire everywhere. There's the wizard and this arch over top. Actually, there's another dragon in there that goes around the, ar um, the arch. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. And there's its tail wrapped around. How cool. Is there another one in there? Or is there just two? I think that's it. I think there's two. But how cool is this? Wizard of Fire. Karen Weaver, I've never done one by her. Black Swan Designs, really cool. This is an oldie. This is an oldie. I believe this is like, we're talking 90s here. I wonder if it has a date in there. 1998. So it's a it's an old chart. <laughs> I don't know how easy these are to find. Um, but I would love, 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 love to start them this year. That would be really cool. Got to find some fun fabric though. Those ones, I just, they scream like, oh, we need fun fabric. Fun, fun fabric. So hopefully the right, right ones will come available this year uh, for me to start that one. But yeah, two for what's there. Okay, up next, we're going to do all of my projects that are in the started stage of the design. And I believe I have 12 of them. First up, we're going to do a Dutch Beauty. This was a beautiful bag that my girlfriend and I, Erica, Fibers and Floss, um, we created together this summer. And this thought was, uh, we really love the windmills on this design. And Dutch Beauty needs a home because Dutch Beauty is a huge project <laughs> by Permin Copenhagen. This is a very, very large stitch that Eric and I are both stitching. And um, I absolutely love it, but this is gonna, this is a legacy stitch. This is gonna take me 10 years to do, maybe longer. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I started it two years ago um, for my birthday. Um, so I will show you my progress so far. It's done on 40 count linen. Um, this is, what is it called? Mm, vintage Country Mocha. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Vintage Country Mocha 40 count in all the called for flosses, um, all done on DMC. Really, really beautiful colors. Um, so when I first started this stitch, I completed sort of, was it page one? Yeah, page one and a little extra because I wanted to complete the tree and the two deer underneath. Um, and then the last time I, I picked this up last year, um, I did some more border. So that's not enough. That is not enough. I need to do some more stitching on Dutch Beauty. I would love to get the next section done that's right underneath. I kind of want to, Erica's stitching hers across. She's going this way. And I want to stitch mine down um, kind of like this. We'll see. We'll see. But I, for the first bit, I want to do one, two, three, get the border and go from there. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to do this um, flower vase. Really, really pretty. There's a bunny rabbit there. I've just done the border down to about here. So some more work needs to get done. I think what it is, like, it is a large project, but again, 40 count, I have to be in the right mood to stitch on this um, and have the correct, like, you know, headspace and also maybe concentration too. But this is going to be so big. <laughs> this fabric is just going to be big enough for this stitch. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. Oh. So awesome. Like this is going to be an accomplishment when I finish this project, along with all of my other ones, but this one especially, um, it's, it's so big. <laughs> what was I thinking? But you know, sometimes for your birthday, you want to do something that um, is special. And you know, this is a big one. This is a big commitment. So I thought this will be a birthday start. And um, this year I plan to get some more progress done. So hold me to that, everyone. <laughs> Samantha, put some more stitches in there. 
Mm -hmm. I do love it though. Like I really, really do. I love the colors. I love the stitch. Um, I just wish it didn't have to be on 40 count or else it would have been a blanket. <laughs> okay. Um, here's, an, here's another sampler. This one I am stitching with Sarah Lady Lugana. This is the 2020 pandemic sampler done by Sarsi Girl. This is a familiar pattern. I'm sure you've seen this. I'm really excited uh, because I'm really happy with my fabric choice on this one. This is 40 count ancient by picture this plus. So there we are center start. Give you a closer look up front here. How do I do that? <laughs> there we go. That's beautiful. I love the colors. I'm really enjoying working on the silk. This is the Missa Seda silk pack for this stitch. Oh, they're just so soft. Like I, every time I, I take this project out and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stitch with the silks. It's so fun. There's still a few colors that I haven't um, opened up yet and haven't stitched and put into the design. So I'm excited to do that this year. Beautiful, yes, 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 yes. I'm excited to get back to this one. I feel like the samplers, you know, every every year I'm like, oh, save it for sampler for September. But then September rolls around and I'm like, ooh, holiday, um, like Halloween stitching, you know, fall stitching, that sort of thing. And then I tend to like, I think that's what happened last year. I think I never really got much to Dutch Beauty and to this one, just a few bits and pieces here. Um, so I'm gonna have to change my plan and do more sampler stitching throughout the year. So, so I can get some more progress. Okay, here's another one. This might be familiar to you all, you know, because it was recent start. This is Mirabilia Shakespeare's Fairies. MD 103. When was this one released? 2009. Wow. It's an oldie. Love this stitch. I am stitching this on 32 count Nocturne by Picture This Plus because I wanted to get that nighttime look so that those lanterns just pop. So there's my start. Decent start, right? <laughs> Sparkly wings, stitch a little bit of her hair, a little bit of her face and part of her dress and then a lantern. And some of the stitching over here by the lant lantern is the second fairy. So it's kind of hard to see what's happening so far, but oh, I'm excited to get back to this. It's beautiful. I'm excited to get back to all of my projects. <laughs> I guess I've been saying that every time, but I am, I'm really excited. A new year means for me, is that um because i always have a goal for myself to make sure that i've touched every single whip and sometimes they'll get like a week sometimes they'll get more than that if it's a couple weeks in the year or um sometimes it's five days you know it just depends um, but i like to make sure that every single project at least got a solid amount of stitching done okay here's another one from summer which I'm looking forward to stitching on again this summer. Is there a picture in here? This one is called Farmer's Market. What's the name? What do I call this? Told in the Garden? Told in the Garden. Farmer's Market. I started this in the summer and I'm looking forward to making some more progress on this again in the summer months. It's got a small start, but I have all the colors and I have another um, Told in the Garden stitch that is called Bird in Hand. And when I was looking, like kitting up all the floss for um, Farmer's Market, I noticed that a lot of the colors for this chart are also the same as um, 
bird in hand. So I might get a start on that one this year too, because I have the fabric, I have most of the colors of floss, it'd be kind of fun to keep them in the same bag and then alternate, you know, working on maybe this one will be summer and the other one could be in the fall or something. Um, but yeah, that's where I've gotten so far. Almost completed the first fruit stand. Got the words in there. Now this is a Lugana. I love stitching on Lugana. It's my new favorite. Oh, I just absolutely love the feeling of the, like the even weave. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Um, this is a 32 count mushroom, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's mushroom Lugana. Pretty, those colors, this is fun. So easy, I, I think. Like the stitching is pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, there's some back stitching in there and the quilts might be a little bit harder. Um, but overall, this is a nice, easy stitch. Something fun, something fun, little variety. And I'm okay, like I, I see designs from 1990s and I still am like, yeah, I still wanna stitch them. <laughs> Some people, I don't know, maybe that's, not everybody does that. I'm okay with stitching things that are from 1990. I love that actually. Okay, here's another stitch. This is a Mirabilia. This one is the Woodland Fairy. Now I'm stitching this with Rogue Mama Stitcher and Sarah, Memphis Sarah E. Uh, we started a stitch along called the Woodland Fairy Sal. And um, we're hoping to get together later this month to stitch on her again, because we did a Zoom together and chit chatted while we had started the project. And yeah, so hopefully we can get some more, some more stitching done on that one. This is a very, very small start. You can barely tell what's going on in this picture yet but I started in the center and I basically just got um, right in here, part of her, like so I'm trying to get the dress that's underneath her shoulder and then down so that I can do her skin soon. And this is a 32 count water lily by Witch Hilt. And I'm pretty sure Sarah, Lady Lugana, had started this project as well. Pretty, pretty sure. I'm excited to see her progress. She had gifted me this beautiful bag um, from the Nora Corbett Queen City, no, yeah, Queen City Stitchers Retreat. Um, and this is a Sheba Designs bag from the retreat. Yeah, Queen City Stitch Retreat 2023. She had gifted me this beautiful bag and the Notion bag, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to put this project in there. It's gotta have a Nora, for sure. Okay, what else do I have here? In the summer, I had started, sorry for this bell curl again. Ah, um, I had started a stitch along, Summer Quaker by Lila Studio, using the hashtag live in the sunshine cell. This was for my birthday in August last year. So you've seen, um, there was quite a few people who jumped on and started the stitch along with me. Um, and I'm gonna continue on like this again, like it's a summer project and it can be stitched on throughout the year, but this was a thing that I really didn't think of, think through, I, I guess, like um, that I would, after summer was over, I wouldn't stitch on it as much. So I'm going to bring this out at, in the new year soon and stitch on it again. I wanna put some more work into Spring Quaker though, uh, but I will get back to summer and I will, obviously, it'll be a summer stitch for July and August as well. But I'm stitching it on a 36 count, uh, hand dyed by Rolanda, ice blue. Again, I'm using the called for DMC and I'm stitching it two strands over two for that nice plush stitching. It looks beautiful. And I kind of wanted the two to match, um, just like count size, fabric size, that sort of thing, um, because I would imagine that, I mean, maybe, maybe I could even have one frame and I pop out these pictures and put in for whatever season. I don't know, maybe something like that or have them displayed on the wall together. We'll see. That's far down the road, but there's Summer Quaker. This is gonna be amazing. 
oh like I think I'm gonna move see I'm happy about this one because I've got the middle border started and I'm not gonna have this problem like my spring Quaker where I'm scared to jump into the middle I have I could if I feel like working in the middle I could do the middle if I want to do the border I could do the border so I love being able to bounce around if I want to but I think I think for this next time I pick it up I want to uh, finish the crab motif and Quaker here and then move across. I want to get how far it's going to be across and then maybe move down, maybe get more of the border done, more of the center. We'll see. We'll see. But I love the crabs. Aren't they adorable? So cute. Yeah. Summer Quaker. Okay, what's next? I got a big pile here. <laughs> okay, reaching down. What's in here? Do I have anything in this one yet? Oh yeah, I do. This is Jane Hopkins, 1875 by Hands Across the Sea. Oh man, I love this stitch. I love this one. It's gonna it's gonna take me some time I've decided to stitch this on a 46 count 46 count latte by fiber on a whim and so far I have look at those itty bitty teeny tiny stitches <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> this is so petite but I you know what it's kind of cool I can do this one strand over two um, I know I can do it. I just need good lighting, good magnification, and away I go. But I kind of love how this sampler has like this full coverage center. The leaves, the flowers are so pretty. And I, this strawberry border is going to be amazing. Oh, this is so good. And um, a lot of the times when I come across a sampler, if it has like a verse in there, I'm always like, well, I could change it to something else. But then I'm, I would have a hard time coming up with something to put in there. I like that this one just has the name in there, Jane Hopkins. Sometimes it's okay if it's like the name, the date, um, maybe where they lived or something like that. Like that's kind of cool. I like that. But whenever there's like a big quote, I'm always like, yeah, pass. <laughs> Pass, uh, which is hard because sometimes there's some really, really beautiful charts, right? And they're just not quite right to your style. Very close, but not quite there. But I would love to do a sampler one day that um, has a house in it, a house sampler. That would be fun. I'm missing that. And I have, I have some um, patterns that were gifted to me that are hands across the sea and they have houses in them. So next one I do, next one I kit up will definitely have a house in it for sure. Okay lost here let's see. getting close to the end we have Rapunzel by Nora Corbett Mirabilia I think this is a stitch that I could potentially after maybe a week of working on it I could move her into the middle section you know because right now yeah she's a start but I do have a good chunk done um, but look at her dress, like look at how big it is. I'm thinking maybe if I can get all of the blue done, the teal color, then maybe I would consider it almost halfway. <laughs> so pretty soon, she's beautiful. And I now have everything I need for her. Um, Memphis Sarah E helped me out. She had um, sent me, she had gone to her local needle workshop and she had looked for the beads I was missing for this stitch and she found them and she shipped them to me and I'm so excited because the next time I pick this up, I kind of want to finish the top of her hair and put in all of those fantastic Magnifica beads. Oh, and there's some beautiful flower um, treasures and there's so much to this, this one. And sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll have a, a mirabilia that it does. I don't need to complete all the stitching. I could kind of stitch as I go. You know, maybe her face is done and I do all the beading around her hair or I do the wings or, you know, something like that. I have done that in the past and I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah, Rapunzel. I'm looking forward to getting back to her. She stitched on a 32 count. This one is Star Sapphire. Linen by Witchell. 
I think that's the called for. Yeah. I have four more projects to show you that are um, winter, Halloween, sorry, winter slash Christmas. <laughs> um, this first one is called The Snowman Wish You. Adorable. And it says, wishing you the best Christmas ever. Cute. I'm stitching this one on a 32 count vintage country mocha. And I would say that by the time I get to the middle, like this is the halfway. So once I finished this snowman, two snowmans, I would say that this would be um, move on to the middle. But right now, I just have one snowman done. I did the tree and the hat and a little bit of the snowman with his nose. Right here, he's gonna be fun. I love his uh, stockings. Nice big round snowman, cute smile. So yeah, a little bit more of the border on the bottom and two more snowmen. <laughs> then I can move up. <laughs> And maybe I'll work on this, um, you know, in January because I feel like during this month is still a time to like stitch on snowman. I think that's kind of fun. We'll see. We'll see where the month goes because I do want to put in a ton of work on my Teresa Wensler Lily Maiden. So we'll see. This is the Dimensions Gold Kit Collection. This one's called Enchanted Ornament Stocking. Love. I love this stitch. This is coming along. Starting to see some dimension. It's looking great. Oh yeah. I can't wait to be able to say to you that I've completed a stocking. <laughs> and you know, I eventually want to stitch all four for our family, one for each of us, um, one day. So I better get going. <laughs> better we get going and make some progress okay and then we have two more dimension kits i have this one here is an ornament from the gold collection it's called the playful snowman ornaments i am stitching this one here Not a ton of progress, but I was really enjoying this over the holidays, over the month of December. I, I don't know, I'm thinking over the month of December might just be like Dimension Gold Kit Collection month. <laughs> because I have um, an ornament, I have a stocking, um, and I have a full coverage piece that I'm gonna show with you. So I feel like that's kind of cool. I got one, of e one thing of each. So there we go, there's that one. Last project to share with you is being held in this beautiful butterfly bag that was gifted to me by my family for Christmas. It's a little boat 88 and beautiful, beautiful design. I absolutely love it. Like the colors in here are just unreal. It, this is gorgeous. Um, I have decided to put in this bag, a gold collection kit that I started over the holidays and is gonna be my holiday stitch. I stitched on this all through like Christmas Eve up until the new year. Um, isn't it adorable? This was gifted to me by a guild member. She had won this kit and had decided that it wasn't something that she was ever gonna stitch. And she passed it on to me saying, Samantha, you need to stitch it. And I was like, yeah, because <laughs> I'm really starting to enjoy dimensions and you know the experience of stitching a kit and it's perfect it's absolutely perfect so i had started it in the middle of the design i put it in a q snap and i was using it in my brand new lowry stand so that that i got for christmas too so that was kind of fun um and this is how far i got so i started right in the middle of the design and i stitched the bridge and then you can kind of tell this is a house in the background a tree there's a bit of the water and then a couple of people starting to you know ice skate in the in the pond sort of thing Oh, that's cute. 
This is fun. I'm looking forward to making this my holiday stitch because you can take your time with it. You know, um, it's like it's like a process. You know, getting the thread out of the out of the um, threads, and um, even just kitting it up was quite fun too. It came with these cards, and you could um, put all the the floss in a certain um, certain order so that you can follow the chart. And then yeah, they're all half stitches which surprised me. Like I was like, where's the cross stitch? There's a couple of cross stitches in there. I think at the black, but majority of it is half stitches. So I think actually like, you know, there's a lot of detail, a lot of detail in the, in the people, but the pond itself is going to be super, super easy to grab a color and fill it all in. Same with the sky. Look at that. I think the houses are going to be fun to stitch with the windows and the greenery, the red, these um, lights here too, lampposts. Those are cute. Um, I love this stitch. I absolutely love it and I can't wait to stitch on it again. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So that was it. Those are all of my whips. You've seen them all. Um, I hope that halfway through the year or that by, yeah, I would love to say by halfway through the year, I've re reached my goal of 30 whips, 10 starts, 10 middles and 10 near the finish. That's the plan. I have been making these little cards for myself to kind of, to write it out because I even broke down my patterns into um, summer, winter and fall. So that in the summer I have five projects that kind of are summer vibe. You know, I've got Summer Quaker, Farmer's Market, Treasure Island, Dutch Beauty, um, Common Threaded Stitcher, and I want to, I have a little note here for myself at a birthday start, maybe a mermaid. That would be amazing. Um, and then for fall, I have Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. I have Azul. I have Luna, Mooka, Shakespeare's Fairies, and 2020 Sampler. Those are giving me the vibes for fall. For winter, I have um, the Dimensions Gold Kits. I have the Stocking, the Full Coverage, Treasure Time. I have the Snowman Ornaments. I have Snowman Wish You, um, Dancer the Reindeer, and Holly the Pixie. So those are some holly, you know, some winteries. I need to work on that though. I kind of want to have like a winter, just a winter stitch. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Um, and then in the spring, I have Spring Quaker, Blue Bell, Emerald City, Lily Maiden, Rapunzel, and Jane Hopkins. That kind of fit in that time of time of year. Um, that I kind of want to like make sure that I've touched all of those during that time. And then for my stitch alongs, I have a couple for 2024 so far. The Woodland Fairy Sal that I'm doing with Rogue Mama Stitcher and Memphis Sarah E. Spring Quaker, Summer Quaker, they're going to continue on this year as well. And then my new stitch along coming up um, February 10th, the hashtag Year of the Dragon Sal. So those are what I've got so far. I'm leaving it open for maybe, a, you know, there might be something throughout the year. I find that like in the spring, all of a sudden it's like, you know, um, all the cells start coming out. Um, sometimes January as well is a big time of year when stitch alongs are, are, are around. And if something grabs my attention, we'll, we'll see. But so far, um, those are the stitch alongs that I'm doing. Um, and I think that's it. I wanted to um, throw in a giveaway. I have um, a viewer had reached out to me when I had mentioned I was collecting Teresa Wensler patterns and she reached out saying that she had some magazines for me um, that she had in her collection that had some Teresa Wensler patterns and one of them um, is Lily Maiden. So a magazine that has the Lily Maiden design inside. And I thought this, because I have this pattern already, this would be a great way to share with all of you. If any of you are interested in stitching Lily Maiden with me and you would like this um, just cross stitch, it is, boy, what year is it? 1993. Um, would like this magazine and to stitch this Teresa Wensler with me. Um, yeah, let me know below by using the word, we'll do Lily. Lily is the word that you'll need to use in your comment and I'll do a draw next month. Um, for this design. Yeah, so good luck on that. And congratulations to Linda Stitching by the Pond, who had won Blitzen. I am excited to get this in the mail out to you. Congratulations. And book a days. One more time. 
How amazing. I'm really excited about that, you know, a new year, new book. But I also brought out my stickers so that you could see them. Um, you know, most of you know that I have been using <clears throat> the Antiquarium sticker book. There are two of them that I have so far, but there's, there's others. Um, these are the two that I have. And there are a thousand stickers in there, over a thousand. So lots and lots to pick from. I'm on my third book of days and I still have stickers for days. <laughs> you can get these on Amazon or at your local bookstore. They have them, they're around. Thank you so much everyone for watching the 2024 Whip Parade. Um, thank you for all of your love and support that you've shown me over the last couple of years on here on YouTube. I so appreciate you all um, getting to know each and every one of you. It's been a real treat and I just really appreciate all of your kind comments, their encouragement. Um, it keeps me going. It keeps me motivated to create more and I'm just, I'm excited for 2024. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great year. Um, look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.